Well, we are back. It's Monday at SNG, and Mary's looking out the window over there. <laughs> and we are in here. I just ran some foam. I didn't show it to you, but we're going to run it again uh, when the interns are here uh, so they can see how this runs. It's not hard. Um, in some ways, actually, silicone's easier to use and less, less sensitive, that's for sure. Uh, you can see this is starting to gel now, which we, what we call gel, uh, which simply means that the foam uh, is, is, is soft and fluffy as it is. So it's gelling and uh, of course in order for it not to collapse like this, it has to be baked for three hours in the oven, which we're going to do. You can see I've been poking at it and uh, that's what happens. This is why you can do construction with it because you can actually sculpt the, the foam and that's what I was going to do originally and then I thought, nah, don't do that. Just, you know, sculpt the hands. You see how you can actually sculpt detail into it and stuff if you want. We used to build all kinds of stuff in construction that way uh, when we were in a rush to get something on the set the next day. But you can see how it's it's set up and where those overflows allowed all the foam to flow out. Another hole right here uh, on the forehead I put in allowed uh, that much to pop out there which tells me just how much pressure would have been in there had I not done that. Uh, we got a nice tight fit. So now let's put it in the oven. So here's our uh, foam in here. It's been cured for three and a half hours. We're going to kind of wiggle this, pop it up, move it there, move it there. It's coming apart really easy. I'm just going to do this really slow. I love the add sound effects. And wow, that looks pretty darn good. Whoa, I mean that just fell away from the Oh hole. wow. Yeah, and look how nice the edges are. Amazing. We're going to keep these attached. You see how thin they are there? Yeah. So you can blend them in really easy to, to the skin all the way around. This is, I mean, I'm amazed we got a good one the first time. And it's very soft. Here, feel it. Isn't that amazing? It's yeah. pre-tinted. So we can actually use this one. We'll run another one tomorrow so you can see how it's done. Uh, but, uh, yeah. That's incredible. Now we're gonna leave this on till we actually use the prosthetic, um, the, the overflow. Mm -hmm. But now you can see why that overflow is so important because you get those great, and also there's a, a hole uh, in the head there which relieves some of the pressure too. And um, this is great. This is exactly how it was done uh, for Star Trek The Next Generation. And, Star Trek uh, 6 that I worked on. And, uh, the first Star Trek movie, they actually weren't really made out of polyurethane foam, if you can believe that. And a lot of you guys out there didn't know that, did you? They are made out of polyurethane foam. There's a whole story that goes with it. Basically, we didn't have time to run things out of, out of uh, foam rubber. So uh, Mark Siegel had been working with BJB and they formulated this formula for very soft polyurethane self-skinning foam. It's and it was like the first time it was ever used, uh, except for the land of a thousand faces and Universal, which is what it was first developed for. And we used that on the Klingon, so they were not foam, foam uh, latex at all. It was probably your thing. So, little, little uh, inside story for you. But uh, after that, they were all done in a foam rubber. And then today, of course, we're doing them out of silicone. And if we get a chance, we're going to run one of these out of silicone just to see the difference. Okay, so here's here's the silicone mold here, like I was talking about. You got the stone on the outside, and then you've got uh, the silicone jacket in there, and this is very, very flexible. See, and it's a one piece, so you don't have any seam line running all the way around. You just you open the mold up, you just pull uh, the silicone piece right out. Of course, there's there's the back plate that went in there. Uh, I forget whose these are. I think these are Tammy Klein's ears, and these are all done out of stone. I didn't use uh, um, resin on these, but you know the ears don't tend to break when you have a silicone jacket because it's a lot uh, stronger. So that's what we're doing. Isn't that interesting? I think it's interesting, and I've been doing this stuff for uh, 40 years. I still think it's really exciting. What do you think? You think it's like? It's really exciting. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You're doing a good job too. Thank you. <laughs> it's not easy. And here we have Jen today, who's helping me. Hello. Uh, 
do the overflows on the years for uh, phase two, uh, Mr. Spock for James Polly uh, and uh, Brandon, the actor, will be wearing these. And of course the overflow is uh, done to create a good blender edge. Uh, I threw away uh, the, the, well actually I peeled away the uh, overflow on this one because I wanted to see how this would fit me. Uh, I think here's the, here we are. Here's the overflow. Uh, and to help you better understand uh, what this does, uh, what I've been talking about all along, is it, it, uh, it allows the mold to only make contact with the uh, life mass only at this very surface here at this very, very point. And so there's only this tiny distance between uh, the overflow and the foam rubber itself, or silicone, if you're using that, and it creates this very fine edge that just completely dissolves away or blends into um, the person's face. So, uh, and we do the same thing on the ears to create a very fine blender edge. And you can see how well this uh, fits me, in fact, uh, I know you've been waiting for this, so uh, here we go. Right. Uh, it fits me really good. Uh, and will blend in beautifully to my eyes all up here. Because it's made to fit me. And we're going to be doing the wig and the teeth neck. And I know I look silly. So uh, we've got that. And so we're doing the same thing over there. So that we have really nice blender edges. Uh, here's the one I did, Oops. and uh, it's pretty good. It's gonna be great. We're going to uh, uh, put a wall of clay around it and pour silicone, and then once the silicone sets up, then we're gonna put a wall of plastic around that and pour stone. That way, the silicone, you just use just what you need for that very area of the prosthetic. It's one piece, so there's no piece behind, because it's flexible enough for you can pull it right off. And uh, the stone keys into the silicone, which keys into these keys, so you get a really good registration. Giselle <laughs> did a casting of my teeth here, and uh, so we're going to make our Klingon teeth. But I have to clean these up a bit, and and then make uh, uh, put them on back plates and do a sculpture and make silicone molds and all that kind of stuff. And then over here, <laughs> we've got. Uh, the ears for phase two uh, for Brandon Stacy, who's playing Spock, of course, in uh, James Crawley's phase two Star Trek. So as soon as this stuff, it's, it's starting kind of to set up, uh, but once it does, uh, we'll be able to pull off all this clay here, clean this up, and as you can see, it just kind of peels off. Uh, and make the stone outer jacket that fits all these keys and keys to this, which you'll see tomorrow. Uh, and over here, uh, I think I already did that, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I put it on my face and acted silly, but anyway, it, it's great. It really came out really cool. So, and we can't wait to put it on. Yep. <laughs> and we're going to turn this beautiful lady into a werewolf, because that's what she wants to do, and you'll see that coming up. <laughs> So that's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. I'll get my silly glasses on. We'll see you then. We're back. It's uh, Wednesday. It's Thanksgiving's Eve. So, you know, we're going to have a little short day here today on Wednesday. And where else last we left off, we were uh, making molds. We are doing all kinds of stuff. I can't even keep up with it. We're making molds of the Spock ears. Now, as you can see, these are nice and firm now. So, and of course, all this stuff just peels off, which is handy for, for cleaning up because I got so much of it old, play, replaced that it was not supposed to be, but it will come right off. So, uh, some of it actually is not fully set up, and that's par for the course when it's on something cold, but um, what we're going to do is remove this clay. Uh, we're going to remove this clay. <laughs> Here, let me show you how easily this is done. Uh, I'm going to move the clay like so. My one-handed technique. 
peel this one on that off. And what we don't want to do is pull it off the sculpture. Not yet. Uh, I put the plastic bag over it to keep the clay from shrinking uh, as it dries out exposed to the open air we did not want that because that would be bad and what happens is the clay shrinks as it dries out and, and, and squeezes in uh, on these and kind of pushes the silicone up and we didn't want that to happen while it was setting up so uh, I put it under plastic so you can see how that's going to come off just fine so we're going to trim all this we're going to put some plastic around it and we're going to fill it with UltraCal and that gives us our spockier mold What are we doing, Rosie? Are we working on the Enterprise at long last? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna. Mm -hmm. You're going to uh, tell us all about it. Okay. <laughs> so we got this apart, and one of the big problems with this model is the nacelles. And I never had these problems with the one I built. So I'm making new uh, plugs for these to fit in, and, and, and we had the classic droop. It didn't have the droop. I had to cut and hack and hew and do all this stuff. Um, Kasha has been helping me with that, which is really handy because it, half the time when I'm doing this stuff, I need another hand uh, hold things in place. So we had to grind things out. We had to level out the slot. You can see the level marks, and it all looks really nasty. But what we're hoping to do within the next hour is get this refilled with some glass Bondo in here first. This is all Vaseline up, so theoretically it can't stick this part to this part. And everything lines up so we can get the side off. It's a long story, but we're going to fill this put this back put this back and we're gonna put that into there until it hardens which won't take long and then pull it out and um, make sure the two parts separate put it back together and then fill this up and slip it down into here also all be Vaseline same deal so we're making good progress here uh, we got our you can't see it very well in, in this lighting but there's a perfect little slot in there which fits this just perfectly and that came away because we Vaselined it and then this is we're correcting the angle here you can see uh, which I showed you before it was really off and it wasn't level to the whole ship which it is now and what we're gonna do now is put some up in here and around here we Vaseline the base so this piece will come away and leave the slot into the foundation structure. Uh, it's going very, very well. So we're gonna uh, now put uh, a whole bunch more in there, put the nacelle back in, and then we're going to uh, hold it, or Kasha's gonna hold it in position and it will go off and we should have what we need. Okay, so you see, we got level nacelles. They're not drooping and the stuff hasn't even got all the way hard yet. Uh, but they're they're actually tilted forward a bit. Uh, keep in mind that this is a tapered piece here. It's it's narrower here than it is here. You see, and so it's an illusion. If this line is level to the top of this, uh, then it doesn't look like they're drooping. And in fact, we went a little forward so that. Um, it would look the top looks level but it's going to droop back a bit over time uh and we're going to shim it and it's it's this is really good thank you <laughs> now what they do is do the other one next wednesday uh but it's it's really good and yeah i should see about that much over the top of the nacelles so that i know that the nacelles are at the right height to this so whew, i know if we got one that good we can get the other one so now we're going to pull it out it wants to focus on Brad's face. Thumbs up, just like that. Yay! Cut. So, we're all cleaned off, and uh, what I did is took a pair of scissors and kind of cut the sharp edges off of this so it, I could slip this in and out of the jacket if I ever need to. Uh, but now, basically, we're going to put some um, styrene around these and pour them with UltraCal 30. So here we got our basic, you've seen this before, but for those of you watching, how are Spock ear molds and Spock ears made and how do we do it now, more importantly, uh, this, this, is, this is styrene plastic cut, very flexible stuff, you can get it anywhere, trust me, go online, look it up, I think that's 010, that thickness, and comes in sheets, 4x8, 4x4, 2x2, 
you can order online, you can go to certain plastic places and get it. But anyway, it's, it's cheap and it's great for doing things like this. And now I can just pour our UltraCal in here and that completes the mold. Uh, we're going to do that now. So now, now we're going to uh, pour in the UltraCal in here. Just like that. And I'm not going to put fiber in it. I don't, we're not going to run this in an oven. So That was enough for one, so we need more. Yeah. I forgot my rubber mallet, but... So here we are. Uh, uh, this is pretty much it. I'm going to... We got a little leakage down the side, but trust me, that's not going to stick to anything because we're against polyurethane. And I think this is the right thickness. It is really, really quite nice. And this is our, our this is our jacket, supporting jacket for the silicone, and also this <laughs> helps key it in. Now we're just going to do the other one. She's mixing up some more ultra now. She being Kasha. Hi, Kasha. Hi. Thanks for coming today on Thanksgiving's Eve. <laughs> uh -huh. And then we're going to do that one. And it's going to be cool because we're done with these. So uh, I've already removed that one. We're just removing the, uh, this is the one that broke loose. We just need to get that off there. You see how that oh. just comes away? And we can even reuse yep, that. Yeah, we sure can here. It just falls right off. And so we have these really nice, precise, clean little little molds. Anyway, we're going to let these sit uh, over the weekend, uh, or at least over the holiday, and then we'll open them up on uh, Friday. Yeah, Friday. They came out great. So what we're doing here, of course, is we're going to do the same thing with these teeth we do with everything else. We make an ear casting, a face cast, a nose, anything. We're going to mount it in a back plate. Reason being is we have uh, the ability to, to key uh, our main support mold or the silicone or whatever material we choose to this foundation right there. So we want that on the teeth just as much as we wanted it on the ears over there for that same reason. So it's very important to have that, what I call a back plate. Plus it gives us places to put keys. And these are gonna be just pure silicone, no stone jacket. We're just gonna have silicone over the teeth, which are gonna be uh, veneers. Uh, so in other words, um, uh, I'm just gonna do the front teeth from about here to there, there to there, which is all we did for Cleons. So we're gonna mix up some uh, Ultra Cal one more time, right? <laughs> you guys are getting used to that, okay, and you know, yeah, I know, and you know what what thickness to make it out of and everything. And we just need enough to go inside of those and have it come up nice and level uh, up to this edge here, but not over the not over the gums, but just to that little lip there that you can just make out. And of course, if you get any any on there, you, it'll just wash off with water before it sets up. So let's get the Ultra Cal in there and then these can sit for a while. Mixing it up and uh, let's make it just a wee bit thinner because we're going to kind of pour it because we don't have really a way oh, of getting yeah. in there that well. Just a little bit. That, good, oh, good. wow. It doesn't that take much, good. does it? A little that tiny feels... bit more. Uh, yeah. You guys are getting this. Yeah, see? And then just sort of shake the, the, the container. And just, yes, yeah, just see how it, liquidy it is. It looks pretty, pretty liquid. That should be good. Now what we're going to do is very carefully, well, I would pour back here and hopefully it'll come all the way around. You might need to take a little uh, popsicle stick or something like that and work it in, but we don't want to get it in the teeth too much. And those, this will move on you, so be real careful. We'll get that all the way around, bit by bit. And the stuff that gets on the teeth will, whoop, see it moved. That's what I, yeah, it's kind of hard not to. The reason I have the clay in there is so that, that the stuff can get underneath of it too, and so there's a good thickness. Mm -hmm. And we'll come back after we get this all poured up and cleaned up. Cool, that's perfect. Well, that was really cool, and of course, what ended up happening is that the uh, the uh, teeth set up in the plates, and then uh, afterwards, I removed the clay, and we kind of cleaned them up. You'll see that 
Uh, we're going to get back to work uh, tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. We're even working Sunday because we've got so much going on in the studio. So there'll be another show next week and you'll see that in plus pictures and all that. But I wanted to take this time to say thank you. I wanted to say how much we love you all for your support. Um, and I want to thank uh, uh, Kasha, Giselle, and Jen so much for interning at SNG and bringing so much life into the studio and fun things that we look forward to doing even more of. And you're going to see some pretty amazing things. So check back next week. Have a great Thanksgiving. And again, we love you a whole bunch.